What's going on, everybody? My name is Jimmy, and welcome to another episode on my YouTube channel called Mind Over Matter. And if you're running low on empty today with mindset, I promise you that your mindset is about to be enhanced after we talked to Bill Grundler today, who's sitting across from me <laughs> on a Zoom call as well. And I'm really starstruck today because I've been a CrossFit athlete for a long time. I had Chase Ingram on last week, and now I've got Bill Grundler. This is so freaking cool for me. Uh, having watched the update shows and following the CrossFit games for a long time. So I'm kind of I got like that, that bug in my stomach, that butterfly. My heart's racing a mile an hour right now. But <laughs> if you're pressing play for the first time, I just want to say thank you. Uh, if you're looking for a channel dedicated to mindset and helping you work on weaknesses and strength and what's between your ears, then this is the channel for you. What I do and how I accomplish that is I interview and provide you with content one-on-one -on -one based uh, from professional athletes who we've had a few on thus far and more to come. Uh, first responders, military personnel, CrossFit game announcers like Chase and Bill Grundler, <laughs> and then just a wealth of knowledge of individuals out there that encompass all spectrums, because at least to me, everybody's got an important perspective, and that's the beauty of a podcast, because you can learn from failures and how they turn them into success, extract that, and apply it to your life. So if you can get on board with that, then press the subscribe button below this video right now while you're watching. It comes at no cost or no charge to you. It's completely free. I'm not going to attempt to spell it in case I spell it wrong on here, but it's there, I promise you. So thanks for doing that for me. <laughs> but without further ado, I've got Bill Grundler here. So Bill Grundler, he's a young man with an awesome mustache and a crazy flow on top of his head. And he is partners right now with Chase Ingram. They are on a tear right now, and they are two of the most notable names in the CrossFit community as far as announcing is concerned. Uh, Bill is also a multi-regional and multi-games competitor. He now owns CrossFit in Inferno. And Pat, or excuse me, not Pat, Bill the person that most of you might not know, used to be a firefighter as well for 17 years in California as well, which we're about to talk about here in just a second. And obviously with the dynamic and the shift of CrossFit, uh, he's no longer with CrossFit or announcing for the games per se. Uh, but again, he is partnered with Chase and still is able to do a lot of sanctional events that he will continue with Chase in the future. So without further ado, Bill, thanks for hopping on and joining me today. Wow. That was quite the intro, man. I appreciate it. And it's uh I'm happy to be the elder that you're uh, talking to with uh, when it talks to mindset and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I'm glad. Dude, I'm stoked to be here, man. Stoked to be here. I appreciate you taking some time out of your schedule. And, you know, you just recently got into podcasting, too, huh? We just talked about yeah. that. Start. How's that yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know what? You want to trip is I never like podcasts have been going on for a while, but I never got into it. Like I, I couldn't figure it out mostly because I couldn't. I didn't understand the idea of why someone w would want to hang out and listen to like an hour and a half conversation between two <laughs> other people. I just didn't get it. And um, I don't know if it was attention, you know, I just didn't have that time frame to look at or whatever. But um, uh, I, I got on a couple podcasts with Chase when he first wanted to do his, his uh, podcast of the get with the programming. Um, I did the first two shows with him. And man, we had a lot of fun. It was really cool just being able to rap out and talk about that kind of stuff. And then when he asked me to be the co-host with him, I was like, yeah. So now all of a sudden I was kind of getting into that. And, you know, like I, like I dig Joe Rogan and all that and all that, all that, but I never really, I mean, you listen to Joe Rogan's podcast and they're all like two and a half hours. And, and I, I did, again, I didn't understand it. Right. But I started doing a lot of driving back to uh, um, my dad. Uh, he recently passed away, but I was driving back and forth trying to take care of him and my mom and stuff. And so I'd listen to a lot of those podcasts. Dude, podcasts are cool. They are cool. So, like, I, I don't know why. Like, I really enjoy just hanging out. And you get a very, uh, I think anyway, a very cool look into whoever it is that they're talking to you know elon musk or Absolutely. joe rogan or you know whoever you know whatever you know even on even on the crossfit landscape it's really fun so uh we have me and chase have been having a really good time doing that you know we've had some guests on our shows and you just whatever the subject is it's just really cool so I, i'm really stoked on the platform it's awesome it is yeah. cool. And it's super, like, it's mentally stimulating too, because it's a learning experience when you're learning from somebody else's perspectives and, you know, you get to hear their thoughts, you get to hear their insight. And when you talk about those two and a half, three hour podcasts that Rogan has, you get kind of sucked in and lured into it where it's like, oh, oh my man. God, like this is interesting. So it is, if you don't like podcasts, 
you need to change your psyche right now. It's, it's awesome. Well, I, I think it's different. I, it's a very, I mean, I think you, you have to have the time frame for sure, mm-hmm. uh, which makes it difficult for some people. If you don't, if you don't have a, an, an hour block of time or whatever, then it gets, I think it's difficult, but I, I honestly have found, and you know, depending on the, I think it really has to do with um, the host and how, and how it's run. But you can watch Joe Rogan and at one time I'm watching Tony Hawk and the next time I'm watching <laughs> Elon Musk and it's like, they're not even in the same ballpark, you know, but, <laughs> uh, but I'm into the conversation the whole time. And it's like, man, it's, this is cool. You know, I, it is, it, if you're not into them, I think it's a very free flowing way to get information. It's not all, you know, I mean, again, it, it's, it's one person's opinion on whatever it is that they're talking about, but the stories that I think people have are, are really interesting and what you get is the actual feeling of how that person is handling whatever it is so especially like you know here we are talking on your podcast with mindset you can tell someone all you want to be tough but it doesn't really mean anything until all of a sudden it's like well how are they doing it how you know what's the what what are the 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 glasses that they're looking through the shades that they're looking through to to, to, to determine how I need to handle this or if it's going to work or not going to work. And I, I think that's really cool. I think it's cool. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you know, speaking of mindset, we're going to talk a lot about that today because there's a lot of stuff going on in all of our minds who are watching this surrounding yeah. the CrossFit community. Obviously yeah. everything with Black Lives Matter, everything with COVID. 2020 is probably one of the best years to start so far. Uh, it's probably to say the least, right? <laughs> it's been absolutely horrible. Well, but we'll- if, if, if you have this, yeah, you got a lot of content to work with. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we're not, a we're, lot to work with. We're not running dry anytime soon, my friend. No. But before we get all. to that point, Bill, um, you know, you and I had a chance to talk a little bit before this, but I knew a little bit about you already. But what most people don't know about you aside from being a CrossFit Games announcer, is that you actually used to be a firefighter for 17 years in California. You retired as a captain, is that correct? Yeah, that's right, yeah. So what brought Uh, you or what led you to firefighting? um, It was really interesting that when, on the forefront of all of my careers, and I I, I mean, the one thing about being older is you end up having a lot of careers. That's just kind of how it goes, or a lot of different things that have happened in your life, so. Uh, when I look back on it, I see the straight line that's been drawn. But on the forefront, when I got out of high, when I got out of college, um, I started coaching at the local high school. I, I was a wrestler in college, and and that was kind of my thing. Um, uh, started coaching right away. Both my parents were teachers. My dad was a high school teacher. My mom was a, a grade school teacher. I loved coaching. I originally was, you know, going to be a, a physical therapist. That's kind of the direction I was wanting to go. Uh, my my college degree was uh, biology anatomy physiology was my was my background um got in coaching loved that went back to school to get my teaching credentials so i became a high school teacher so i was actually a high school teacher taught uh biology general science for esl and uh medical careers is what i was was what i was teaching coach swimming uh helped coach wrestling with my dad at the high school he was working at as well and in the summer times, like, so I was actually doing that. I, I uh, went, to, went to school at Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo in California, went out to Arizona to finish my teaching credential. Uh, I had the ins with the, with the school district out there. So that's how that kind of worked. But mm-hmm. every summer I would come back and I started lifeguarding. So I got into the beach guarding thing. So I'd you know, teach in the summertime. Then I'd come back and, and lifeguard um, on the beach up here in Pismo Beach. Um, during the summer times. Well, the Pismo Beach lifeguards were run by the Pismo Beach Fire Department at the time. I didn't know anything about fire. I mean, my parents were teachers. That's all I knew. That's all I knew. So started kind of figuring, I loved, loved doing the lifeguard thing because it was training. It was physical activity. It was feeling like I was part of a team again. I mean, I, you know, I wrestled forever and ever and ever. So like being part of a unit like that was really, really cool. And I wanted to look more into that. And a lot of the guys that I was working with were trying to become firefighters. And, you know, I just started asking questions and I'd see the big trucks and I'd see what the guys would go on or that we would be on calls with them at the beach. You know, we'd be making rescues. And I, I like that whole scene. I just really, really liked. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, OK, I think I need to make a switch. <laughs> and so basically went from teaching in Arizona to coming out to California and going through the whole uh, uh, 
call the junior college fire academy type stuff that they have out here. Mm -hmm. um, got on as a reserve firefighter at Pismo Beach Fire Department. Um, was doing that. Happened to have a very active year. That was uh, 90, uh, 96 or 97 where they had the big El Nino year and there were a ton of water rescue. So I actually got as a as a brand new reserve firefighter, got to go on a lot of calls because the water rescue thing was my deal. I was a lifeguard. Mm -hmm. So, and we respond to all the beach um, activities, all the, our station was like literally right up from the beach. So we had a lot of activity there, um, started testing all over the place, uh, started going through interviews all over the place, was lucky enough to get hired at my station. Um, they had some shuffling and it was, a, you know, it was right place at the right time. There were, it was a small department, small station. Uh, so you could kind of still, even though I was testing everywhere and, th and this was back in the day where you'd go to LA County fire department and there'd be 15,000 people that are testing for two spots kind of a thing. It was like that kind of a deal, you know? <laughs> um, so lucky enough to be able to get in at my fire department was able to work my way up. Cal fire came in, uh, the city was, uh, Pismo beach is a small little beach community, but uh, Cal Fire, which is the state fire department, has contracted with a lot of municipalities and they came in and did a contract with the city. So we then became Cal Fire employees. Uh, as I went from engineer to uh, acting officer and OIC officer in charge into the captain's position, that all happened right when that change was. So they looked at all of my everything that all of my certifications and blah, 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 and everything that I have and brought me over as a captain. Went through their academy because they wanted to make sure because the state if you're a state firefighter, there's a lot of other things that are happening. I mean, here we are in our little beach community. I'm real good at beach rescues and cliff rescues and um, auto rescues and all that kind of stuff. But when it comes to the big, big, big wildland campaigns, like I can go in and roll in on my little, you know, type three engine and know what to do. <laughs> but if it's a big incident now, they want us to make sure that we can handle all that kind of stuff. So went through their academy as well. They put us through their training and um, I was then stationed at uh, the Shell, let's see, what, I think it was the Pismo Station first, was moved to the Avila Station for a while, ended up my career at the Shell Beach Station, which is a, they classified it as a Schedule C, a Schedule C department, which was a Schedule A for the off season, which is the, the winter time, which would, we would run our regular engine. And then during the summertime, we'd be in our wildland engine and mm. we'd be responding all over the state. So I've seen now a bunch of stuff. I've seen the huge California campaigns and, you know, the big fires there and, and um, been, you know, if, if you're a firefighter, you say you're fortunate enough to be involved in a lot of incidents. If you're mm. not on the fire scene, you've, you've had the misfortune of being able to be in a lot of these incidents with a lot of people. Um, I've seen some really big fire campaigns. I've seen big um, flood incidents. I've seen big incidents when they're dealing with, uh, uh, you know, large scale, like when they had the- uh, Like a mass the, casualty? Well, those, or even like the, the big chicken flu that was came oh, through, yeah. like, you know, way back, the whole SARS thing and all that. So, I mean, our, the, the CAL FIRE department is known for their strategic movement with large groups of people to be able to handle large incidents like that. Mm -hmm. And so I've been able to be a, you know, a, a part of those as well as the very small incidents where you're rolling in on all the medical aids and doing all those kind of things. So I, I tell you what, like I loved that job um, dearly. I I'd still, it's kind of one of those things. I still see it. Like I, I've been out of the service now for ooh, six years, seven years now, I think. And it, it's kind of like the Marine thing. Like you don't not see yourself as a firefighter anymore. Like I still see myself as a firefighter and respond as such. And when things go, when things go haywire, I always revert back to the, the techniques and the skills that I've learned from that. And that's a lot how I handle um, a lot of the stuff, but like, yeah, so we, I, that, that was that job. And I loved everything about it, uh, everything about, about it i loved all the teaching part of it i loved all the physical aspect of it um and that's really like where my gym came from because i as a coach and as an athlete i saw the benefit of physical activity and i have a very high standard and a high 
uh, expectation of what a rescuer is supposed to be able to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the, I, I would get into a lot of arguments with uh, a lot of fire personnel chiefs most of the time um, about physical fitness in the fire service. Mm -hmm. And as much as I loved all the stuff that our unions would do for us as firefighters and protect us, I hated the fact that it, it allowed people to hide behind reasons that they really shouldn't be on the engine during that time. I mean, like we would take a, brand new engine out of service if the you know the retarder on the pump isn't isn't working properly mm -hmm. one simple little thing that i could control as an engineer that i wouldn't even need to even look at that but we'll take that whole thing out of service <laughs> yet we have guys that can't bend over or can't walk or can't go upstairs or can't carry all the stuff or are extremely overweight or extremely unhealthy and they aren't able to do the service that they need to do for their community and i, I had a really hard time with that so that's kind of where the CrossFit Inferno started because I really liked what CrossFit was. Mm -hmm. um, I like the idea of being able to be good at anything and everything because as a, especially as a, as a Cal Fire employee, we're either hiking hills or I'm putting holes in roofs or I'm having to pull a car apart. So it's like I, I have the full spectrum of everything I need to be able to do. And if that's the case, I need to have a plan to be able to do that. And that CrossFit was the only thing that I saw that did that. And I've been, I mean, I've been a, I've been a jock since I was five years old, you know, mm -hmm. so I've done every workout program out there and there wasn't anything better than that. And it, it didn't, there wasn't anything that gave the results functional results. I mean, maybe, you know, you could, you could do more curls and make your arms look better, but you know <laughs> I mean? Like this other stuff makes you look like a badass. It, it, it makes you a bad badass plus you look like a badass. And that, I mean, that's what I, that's what I loved about it. So that's, that's kind of where that gym started. And that was done while I was working and, um, you know, eventually I had to, I came to a point where it was like, I, I got to make a choice somewhere. Absolutely. There's too much happening on both sides, you know, it's, it's a lot to juggle. And that's, you know, I'm glad that you kind of said that is because there's a lot of people out there who will say, thank you for your ser service. We really appreciate what you do and have absolutely no clue what it is we do and how hard it yeah. is to get hired at a freaking fire department. Like you yeah. said, you tested for against 15,000 people for two spots well, yeah. I've had people ask me, so do I just show up to a firehouse and put in an application like I do at McDonald's and say, hey, can I have a job? It's like, it's like, no, no, they're, they're so like, it's just when you kind of go like, oh my God, like, no, yeah, There's years of schooling. It's a competitive process. There's polygraphs that a lot of people would bomb nowadays. Yeah. It's just it, the list goes on and on and on. It's one of the hardest jobs, I think, in the entire planet to land. And yeah, and saying so, there's just so much constantly that goes into it which I'm sure at some point in time was that hard decision for you. Like, do I be a gym owner or to be a firefighter? It's hard, you can do both, but it's hard to find a balance when you're trying to be best at both things. Yeah. I, I the, the, the problem is that I had, I have too much respect for both parts. Um, I have seen my fair share of, and, and when I talk bad about people in the fire service, that doesn't mean that like everyone in there is bad and everyone's, you know, out of shape and, and people don't count or whatever, or they're not trying. I think you're always going to find complacency in, in people in every position. I mean, it could be a bag, it could be a bag boy. I mean, if they've done it for a long time, eventually they're going to get kind of complacent with it if there's no reason for them to keep fired up. But I didn't, the gym was getting very busy. Mm -hmm. um, CrossFit was blowing up. Um, in a good way, mm -hmm. not the way it's right now, right now. <laughs> um, in a good way. Um, and I, you know, I was doing a lot of broadcasting stuff and all of that was happening in the summertime. Well, in California, California burns in the summertime. And so they, you know, my, my chiefs as much as they were, so I, I was a physical fitness coordinator for our County department and that's great. Um, they're really it, part of that, part of that job was to be able to, you know, keep your education in that sort of area, uh, be able to go to whatever, um, meetings and, and things like that that are around. But the problem is there aren't any of those things around. So what I was doing was being able to use broadcasting the CrossFit games as that, um, my department knew that like they saw if I went on camera, they knew that I was the Cal Fire fire captain 
here representing and here competing and here doing all that stuff. So they were like, they kind of, you know, they let me go with that as much as they could. But mm -hmm. when the, when California is blowing up, what we end up doing like all over the state, Cal Northern California may have a big fire. So they, they're dumping all the resources to that. So that means that they're pulling everyone from Southern California up and kind of spreading them out along other stations. So I could go from my, my station right in the middle of California, right between LA and San Francisco, right on the coast. I could be called out at two in the morning to go and cover stations up at the very northern border of California, be turned around on the way back and be heading down towards San Diego because now San Diego's burning, you know, <laughs> and then it, it, I may go to the fire. I may go and cover other people's stations, but you get mobilized that way. And it was, it just became, it became too much to be able to do both and be on the top of my game. And I, I never saw myself as, uh status quo or mediocrity or just enough never when you're an athlete like you, you can't exist that way that's just not how it goes and so i was seeing myself that as both were kind of building up same thing with the gym i i didn't want all these gyms that were popping up to surpass what my gym was i mean we we've been around we've been around for since 2008 mm -hmm. um so, you know, I didn't want all these gyms passing me up just because they had the time to do it. I mean, I right. was doing a lot of gym stuff on the after hours, you know, when I was at work, but like both sides were needing attention. And on top of that, I mean, I had at the time, my oldest daughter, I mean, she was, she was a kid and I was wanting to spend time with her. So I was really getting pulled in all directions. And I'm like, I, I got to make a choice. And as many people that told me like, look, man, you don't quit the fire department. I mean, the benefits <laughs> are insane. The pay is great. I mean, all of that kind of stuff. You can retire relatively early based on it you know, with a good retirement plan, which is all tr totally true. But the gym was mine. And absolutely. I couldn't give that. I couldn't give that up. Um, so as, as hard of a decision as that was, um, I decided to, to retire early out of the fire, to, out of the fire department and go all into the gym and the broadcasting and the taking care of that kind of thing and all that. And it was, uh, I will say, I mean, I, I'm by no means a businessman at all. I mean, like I said, my parents are teachers and I'm a jock and I'm a, <laughs> I, I put holes in walls and holes in roofs. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I do. So understanding all the other stuff, there was a lot of learning that happened out of that. And I mean, I I'd still would say I'm, I'm a novice at it, but I, I'm learning quickly. Um, so I, I love, I love what it is. Yeah. And I love doing it and I, I would never take it back. But I, I have to admit when I see my old rig driving by or something like that, I'm like, ah, there they go. Right. Imagine what they're talking about right now in the headphones, <laughs> you know, <laughs> as they're driving Absolutely. by. Absolutely. <laughs> Those bastards. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a question for you too on the note of opening up an affiliate. Uh, obviously, we all know, I'm sure a lot of people from CrossFit are going to be watching this. California is like the mecca for CrossFit. It's, it, it's basically where CrossFit – Got it started. Start, yeah. Got, got, yeah. Start at the ranch. What's it like owning an affiliate in a pretty saturated market like that? Because there seems to be gyms all over the place in California. Um, I think it's really, you know, there's been a lot of waves that have gone through um, over the years with that. And, you know, obviously in the, the bigger cities you go to, they're going to have more, um, more CrossFit gyms. I mean, I remember, I think San Diego at one point, and I thought that this was a big deal back in the day, San Diego, the city of San Diego, I think had the highest number of CrossFit gyms per capita. And I think at the time it was like, I don't know, I want to say like 26 or 28, which then seemed like a gigantic number. Now, like that's not even... I know it, it's like, it's gotta be in the hundreds now. You know what I mean? Like just uh, uh, an area that big um, having something like that, there's just no way that that's even a big, but that was a big deal then. And it was, you know, how are you supposed to survive and how are you supposed to make it? And, you know, there was a lot of trying to figure out one of the, one of the great things about having a, a CrossFit gym was that the design was set up to where you could make it anything you wanted it to be. And as all these gyms really started to, to pop up, that was a really hard decision for or, or a lot of hard, a, a very hard concept for people to get. Mm. You know, you would have gyms that would pop up right next door to someone else. 
and then they would expect either you know crossfit community um courteousness that you wouldn't come and pop up right next to me but <laughs> that would happen um you know there was a lot of times where that would be a uh, an angry trainer from one gym that would leave and go all right well i'm gonna i'm gonna try and screw you so i'm gonna go right over here and do it and try to pull all the members and you know they were undercutting on costs and trying to do that kind of stuff so i mean that was a very there were a lot of growing pains with that mm -hmm. um i i think that now enough gyms are are learning that it's like Okay, there is a worldwide community within CrossFit for sure. Um, there are locale areas. Yes, those locale areas are going to be competing for the same number of people. But now it's really forcing gyms to understand what it is that they're selling to their people. Mm. Because you can't just say, hey, we do CrossFit and everyone's going to come into your place. Because it's like, oh, I heard about this thing. <laughs> Everybody knows what CrossFit is now. Like, mm. you're, not, you're, not, you're not saying something new. But the, I think the what it's forcing gyms and gym owners to do is you have to understand exactly what your product is. Mm -hmm. You have to understand exactly what it is that you're selling. Um, I mean, I'm, one of the things that keeps people within CrossFit is community. Mm -hmm. But how many people go to the gym for a community? Like no one's going to go, oh, you really know, I, I need to lose some weight. I think I need to find myself a community. It's not going to happen. I mean, that, right. that isn't going to happen. But there's a way to, for people to understand how that works. And, you know, now all of these, all of these micro gyms have to understand what is it that, that they're giving to people? Uh, is it mm -hmm. something different or is it the exact same thing? I like to think that the the unique thing about the crossfit gym right now is that they are able to give their version of crossfit mm -hmm. and you know i mean the methodologies will be there but even that's kind of tweaked from gym to gym depending on the coach that's there and depending on their background and um you know there there are there are crossfit gyms that are out there that are very strength organ strength biased mm -hmm. there are going to be some that are gymnastic biased there are going to be some that are uh, mobility biased there are going to be some that are going to be uh, um you know they're gonna i don't want to say cater but quote cater to you know an older demographic or an adaptive demographic or a uh you know recovering drug and alcoholic um you know uh sector and the the, the fact that all of that is out there is awesome because now you have a variety of places to pick. And as a, as a consumer as, or someone that needs, that wants to change my life, I now can find the gym that's going to help me do that the best. Um, yeah. I, I don't think that, I do believe that CrossFit is for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that now with so many gyms out there, you can find the one that's going to suit you the best. And I think that that's, I think that that's good. I think, Absolutely. honestly, I think that's good for the gym and for the, and for the member, honestly. Absolutely. Um, I mean, it's I just, still think that, I still think that my gym is the best, but you know, <laughs> if, if we don't fit you, I mean, that's cool. I mean, I, I understand. I mean, and you really, you, there is no way of covering everyone. Mm -hmm. um, at least effectively, you know I mean? You, you can sure. cover everyone, but you may not be able to get them exactly what they need. And so I think it's, it's, it actually is a good thing that um, they now have options to find Absolutely. where they can thrive. Options are good. Yeah. Well, you but, I, to... but I think it scares the shit out of a lot of people that are wanting to open up a gym. And it, if you don't know, if you don't know what you're doing, then you will get, uh, you'll get run over. Like you, your <laughs> gym won't be able to make it. And that's something that I think that people have to understand. Like you can't, when we opened up, we didn't know what the hell we were doing. We were not business people. It was me my engineer and my firefighter and that's how we that's how we started it we were not business people we were firefighters period so the thing is is that having no business understanding like that like you can't come into the game without like especially now without having your business side solid mm -hmm. if it's not solid you don't have a shot i mean the lucky thing for us now honestly is i mean you know again like i i'm 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 much better now than we were and we at least have a have a good reputation behind us so we can kind of run off that a little bit and that will kind of smooth over some of the holes that and the gaps that we at least that we had so, yeah yeah absolutely well you you know you mentioned options it seems like you've always had 
job options because you've created that opportunity for yourself. Uh, you know, you start, you you were a fire, firefighter, you opened up Inferno, even though you didn't have any business knowledge whatsoever. It seems like you're creating an awesome brand like you have so far. You're surviving, you're getting by, which is, which is impressive right now. And then go ahead. No, I was going to say, well, I, I, that's, um, I, I mean, one, I, I like to say that I don't want to say it's lucky, but I mean, we, we have been lucky to, I like I, the fact that we were in our 12th year now, that's saying there was, ne there was never a plan for that. Mm -hmm. Like we just were like, okay, we're going to go. And I, I mean, the only real plan we started off with was, well, okay, we'll, we'll take a, 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 a lease out on this one building for a year. And I mean, if we don't make it, whatever. And then it just kind of kept on going. There wasn't yeah. like a, okay, now we need to do this and <laughs> five year and the 10 year and the 15 year. Now, you know, now, now we are, now we've done that and, and are doing that, but um, that was never the case. So we were lucky enough to do that um, and lucky enough to, to be able to do that. But yeah, you have, you have to be able, I, I didn't understand the idea of pivot. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't, I didn't know what the hell that meant. I didn't understand it. All I know is that like, I, tr I treated what we did like, a coach with athletes and I'm going to try and take care of my athletes as best I can. Um, and that, that was, you know, we were lucky enough to have that work at least for most of it. Absolutely. And then you, you kind of learn after that, <laughs> learn on the fly, you know? Well, you were, you were learning on the fly, but you were also doing your own damn work by competing at a high level as a regional athlete and then a games athlete. But where did the broadcasting come about because i i asked chase the same question now i want to hear your answer uh okay so for me um i don't have any broadcast experience um never never had any aspirations of wanting to you know do broadcasting or live live commentary or uh, that was never my thing i had no idea even really had no idea even what that was other than the guys that i would see on tv um it was the very first live uh, broadcast regional event in SoCal. Um, it was the first time HQ ever had that. And at the show, they had Justin Judkins and Marty Say were doing the commentary. Uh, Miranda Oldroyd was the interviewer, so she would do uh, sideline reporting sort of. Yeah. Uh, Rory was kind of, uh, Rory McKernan was kind of working the board and that was when Tony Budding was still in the mix as like the head of the, the media department. Um, I think that was 2010 that year. Uh, I was competing. I was doing well. I think it was my 40th birthday that during that competition. So I'm in there doing my thing, going through all the events. I did well in, in one of the two events and they, they, had me come in in to interview and justin judkins he's an ex-wrestler he wrestled up at, at boise state i wrestled the cal poly we wrestled against each other we didn't know that at the time i think we were, we were a year difference i think i was a year i'm a year or two older than he is uh, but our teams would wrestle all the time so immediately and this is this is one, one of those community type things when you're a wrestler and you meet a wrestler you instantly have a connection and me and justin were able to talk so right away we're kind of talking shit to each other and kind of jabbing <laughs> at each other and being goofy and everything. And, um, very comfortable when we were talking. Uh, so that interview went fine. Miranda interviewed me for something. I think I was interviewed again. And when I was going out for the last event, um, I was in, I think ninth place going into the final event. I think you, I think I had to be fourth to qualify for the games. Um, as I'm walking out, to the to the uh, the the track that we had to do this run on, I'm walking out there. I'm just kind of by myself, got all my stuff, and I'm walking out. And Tony Buddy kind of runs up to me, and he's he's like, "Hey, Bill, let me talk to you for a second. I'm like, "Oh, Tony Buddy, okay. I've seen you <laughs> on the old videos, you know, the old HQ videos." He's like, he's like, "Hey, man, um, you're doing great. It's awesome. Um, it would be." it would be unreal and super cool if you qualify because you know, you'd be a great story to talk about at the games, you know, with your age and everything, it'd be just be awesome. But if you don't make it, um, what do you think about being a, a commentary, uh, you know, being on the commentary team for the games? And I'm like, I didn't really even know what the heck that even meant, but I go, <laughs> so you're saying I could, I either go to the games or I get to go to the games. And he's like, 
yeah. And I'm like, yes, sign me up. That's it. <laughs> so so that was my interview. Like chain. literally that was it. That was it. Totally. So that was it. So I, I go out, I did decent in the event. I ended up seventh overall. So I missed it yeah. by three um, places, which in my CrossFit career for the open division stuff, other than 2012, I always missed it by three places in Ah, oh, it's such a hard pill to swallow, but that's whatever. It's, it's okay. Um, but yeah, so that was it. So then he hits me up afterwards and says, okay, so I want you to be um, the color commentator. And um, here's what that means. Um, you're going to offer insight to what people are doing. And I'm like, okay, that's not very specific. So, and he's like, okay, well go watch this person. They're a color commentator. I'm watching. I'm like, I, I still don't see the difference between what that guy's doing and what that guy's doing. Like, I don't understand what is happening. So went into it. I mean, I, it's funny through the, uh, the podcast that me and Chase do, we, we, you know, we, we've been looking at the programming of all the games. So we've gone back and looked at some of the events and some of the stuff on YouTube. And like, I'm watching the events and listening to what we're saying. And I'm just like, Oh my God, that's so bad. Why are you talking like that? Why are you saying that's not even your thing to say. Why, why? Oh, shut up. He's supposed to be saying, why are you saying, why is he taking your line? You're taking his line. Oh man. So there was a lot of learning, even in what we did in the media department. But, um, the, I think the thing that, that played in our favor is we loved what we were watching. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, whether we were, all of us that were in it were athletes in the sport. And so we, we were very fired up about being able to give that information to people. So, you know, what we lacked in, in experience, um, we, we had in enthusiasm, I yeah. think. So, uh, you know, we really had it. And then, you know, after that, it was like, we had a lot of years of a lot of people coming in, like we're talking top notch people that would work with people on ESPN and CBS and whatever, and teach us what we're supposed to do. So now, I mean, I, I honestly feel that um, the last CrossFit media game that we did, the, the 2018 games that we did, uh, the team that we had on the production, the direct, the, the, the direction, the sideline reporting, the commentating teams that we had, the way that everything played out um, on CBS, you know, here we are at the big stage on CBS. It was so, I was so proud of the job that we did. Was it was fun. amazing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, I, I really honestly think that, you know, we could hold, we could go up toe to toe with, with anyone, with anyone out there and, and compete at least on a broadcast level, a, a commentary level, a live, a live commentary level uh, with anyone. I mean, it was, I think that we really got to a point that we were real, real strong, which was, I'm real proud of it. I would have never thought that in a mm -hmm. million years that that would be somewhere where I would be, but um, super honored, super blessed to be able to be part of something like that. And the finding out how much I really enjoy it is unreal that's a, yeah. that's really cool absolutely well it's cool for like i said that's why i'm like starstruck right now because like you know haven't watched you on tv and everywhere <laughs> seeing you and chase everywhere even though i knew chase beforehand it was it was freaking cool man and to have you here now is awesome yeah and for so long it seemed like crossfit was just trending upwards it was not coming back down and yeah. then it's just like the stock market now 2020 rolls around and it just plummets yeah. Yeah. There's no fine line in between. It just went from 100 to absolutely zero right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the best way I can explain it. What is it like for you now watching the evolution of CrossFit and the direction it's kind of taken? Because I told this to Chase, I feel like there was a lot of uncertainty and a lot of unknown that was not very well explained. And I still think that there's a lot of in between or limbo. With what's you mean like on. with the current with the current situation? Mm -hmm. um, I think that um, as far as the the upward trend, I think the reason there was such a strong upward trend is because of the results that people were seeing. Um, you know, just I mean, I'm talking, you know, losing weight and feeling healthier and all that kind of stuff. But the the drive, and I'm not even talking on competitive side, I'm talking like uh, across the board. I mean, people losing weight, people getting healthier, people, you know, fighting diabetes, all that. That was 
people were seeing it working and they were seeing that the the community that like i mean if you look at maslow's hierarchy of needs you want to feel like you belong mm -hmm. and that's what these gyms would do is you felt like you belong i mean that's that's why in, in the inner cities like gangs would be such a, a prevalent thing because you know if if a kid's family is is not functioning the gang becomes their family because they feel like they're included they feel loved they feel protected and that's what a crossfit gym was doing regular gyms didn't have that mm -hmm. um everyone would be in there with their headphones doing their own thing and they're in their own little world not that's bad that was just what that's kind of how, how it worked out so that trend of seeing that and seeing how there was a lot of success with that people wanted to be on the bandwagon jump mm -hmm. on the bandwagon um as that happens, there was a lot of, uh, again, there was a lot of, you know, talking to HQ from affiliates of, you know, what, what are you doing for me? And I, I think that a lot of people were expecting them to give them a lot more business type stuff, whether it's, you know, advertising type stuff or, or certain plans or procedures or whatever. And that was never really what the affiliation fee was for. The affiliation fee was you're, you're basically licensing the name. You're licensing mm -hmm. the name CrossFit. Um, you're allowed to say that you're a CrossFit trainer, that you specifically coached CrossFit here. As it grew and grew and grew, uh, there were people that were, that were coaching CrossFit-like stuff. They just couldn't call it CrossFit. Mm -hmm. um, and which is fine. And that's fine. But, but they could never – they could never I, I really found that the argument of what what is HQ doing for me as kind of a moot point because I wanted to do what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to say CrossFit because if we say CrossFit, even though people would say like, yeah, but you know, it's, it's hard because if you say CrossFit, they're going to think that it's this deadly, super hard, super bad. You're going to get hurt, whatever. And I'm like, okay, let them come and I'll explain it. Because if I can't explain it and educate them, they shouldn't come here yep. because I'm not doing a good enough job on my part. Um, and if I'm explaining it well enough to my people, they will do that for me. Mm -hmm. I don't need to have 900 people in my gym. That, that's, not the, that's not the business model of the CrossFit gym. The business model is I need to have whatever, 100 to, to 200 members where I know I know them. I'm taking care of them. They know exactly what they're getting from me and, and, and you know, they're, they're loved, they're respected, they're cared for, and we're getting them to their goals. And mm -hmm. I can do that on a, on, a, on a smaller level like that. So I think that that's where that build and people want to see that. That being the case, current status. Um, I am bummed of how that all went down when it went down mm -hmm. um, you know the comments glassman made you know and i've seen everyone from saying that you know he's an absolute racist to um you know whatever they're just regular comments and everything in between i think that i mean i i, I know greg personally um he has never done anything wrong by me but i'm not going to say that his comments were appropriate mm -hmm. at all and more than anything i am now having to deal with that ramification i'm having to deal with the comments that he made whereas before even you know crossfit could kind of do whatever they wanted to do it never affected what i was doing i mean mm -hmm. crossfit hq is not crossfit inferno crossfit inferno is crossfit methodology yeah but it's uh, it's under it's in the box of what i have designed with my community and my people and the way i and the way i put it together and the way i and my staff treat our members and and you know the the way we are you know non-discriminatory against anyone that comes into the gym and we will work with everyone and everyone's going to be respected and loved and cared and all that kind of stuff all of a sudden now i'm having to answer to someone else's statements mm. and the fact of the matter is, is that I have absolutely zero control over what anyone else says other than what I say. So I can't, I don't, with, with uh, Glassman saying those comments, 
I don't think that those are representative of CrossFit as a whole. Um, you know, to say that, that um, you know, CrossFit is exclusionary and it, you know, doesn't allow, is that right? Keeping people out, exclusion, yeah, exclusionary. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's crazy. If you go to four months ago, five months ago, six months ago, you could go to CrossFit HQ. You could do this like six years ago. Go to CrossFit HQ, and when you walk in, you'll see, um, you know, African Americans, Hispanics, uh, Iranians, uh, obviously Caucasian. I mean, you're in Scotts Valley. I mean, it's it's a it's. I wouldn't say it's a it's a mega diverse area necessarily, but you still have all these people. Um, uh, very conservative individuals, uh, very liberal individuals. You have, um, you know, homosexual individuals. I mean, it's a very, it's, if you look at what that group is, it's pretty dang diverse compared right. to a lot. I mean, almost any other group that I've seen mm -hmm. um, in a very non diverse area. And I, so I never got the CrossFit excludes any individuals. I never saw that. I never heard any of that. Now, that's not to say, I mean, I was never on the inside. I never specifically worked for CrossFit. I was always an independent contractor. Even when I did the commentary stuff, I wasn't, I didn't work in the media department. I didn't have an office in there or anything like that. Um, they knew that when broadcasts were coming in, I, they would call me and I would go work with either Chase or with, with Sean or whatever. So that's how that works. So I, I, like I was very shocked at the statements and uh, and, and all that kind of stuff, but I, I tried to remove myself from, okay, again, I can't control what someone is saying or why they're saying it. So I need to look at the big picture, which is what is CrossFit, mm -hmm. you know, and what, and what does that have to do with me and my people? CrossFit is a methodology that is the best methodology out there that gets the best results for people for their health and their fitness and gets them most functional period. There is nothing else out there like that. I agree. And I'll, and I will hold to that. I will hold to that. Um, I, you know, I think it, it's very easy with the current, with the current, uh, state of the world right now, um, to, to have everything to immediately jump to where everything is, is racist. Um, mm. I don't think that every single comment is racist. Is racism out there? Absolutely. Should it be stopped? hundred um, percent. Does there need to be awareness of that? Absolutely. Do people need to be held accountable for comments that they make? Of course they do. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. um, now that, now that this is happening within the CrossFit world, I, I think that, um, you know, there are people that pulled out right away. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that that is a fine reaction to that. Sure. My personal reaction is that I want to wait to see what the change is. Uh, mostly because, I mean, like I, my, Mostly because the brand that I have for my box is CrossFit Inferno. Now, granted, I don't like when people say, oh, I'm going to CrossFit. Because if you say you're going to CrossFit, that could be any CrossFit gym. But, I mean, <laughs> honestly, I want them to say they're going to Inferno. And I think that that's important. We've, we've tried to brand it that way, but we are CrossFit Inferno. Mm -hmm. I believe in that brand name, CrossFit Inferno, not CrossFit with Inferno or you know, Inferno that uses CrossFit or anything <laughs> like that. I believe in CrossFit Inferno because that's what we have pushed. Um, but I also feel that um, I want to see what this change is going to be. Now, now Glassman's been removed. I know that Dave has been brought in. Mm -hmm. um, I hear all the, the stories, the, the comments that people are making about how that's a puppet move. And, and I, I think that that comment isn't, the feelings behind that comment aren't unwarranted. Mm -hmm. um, but I still think that like, there's no way I like Dave's coming into a shit storm. Mm -hmm. I don't think that he would be excited about coming into a shit storm without understanding what he's going to have to deal with. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Dave's a soldier, so he's going to, he's going to get his team together to make things better. And I already know, like, there's a lot of things that people don't see on the forefront that people don't see on the background where there's a lot of communication with a lot of 
um, affiliate owners, um, seminar people, seminar staff people, um, names that have been in our space for a lot of years that are trying to come up with a way to present to how to make this better. I don't Absolutely. think it's going to be, oh, Dave's in there. Okay, it's fine. There's no way. I, I, I just can't see that being the case. I mean, it may, maybe that's because, you know, I mean, there is, I, I do have, uh, I, and I, I, I have a hard time using these words, but I, I don't want the fact that I'm loyal to CrossFit the name to make people think that it's like, oh, well, he's just blindly following him. That's not the case. Like, mm -hmm. if they don't fix it, I'm out. I, I don't want to be represented with a, with a, sure. a brand like that that's going to do damage. I know that there's been so many positive things that CrossFit has done. And I want to see the changes made. Absolutely. And I think that there are going to be changes. People just have to give it a chance. Like changes don't happen like that. You know, exactly. it, it takes a while. Like let us put, let them put all those things in order. Let these, these subcommittees that are putting things in order. I mean, I, there's, you know, I've seen Ben Bergeron was doing a, a, a town hall meeting. Um, there's an affiliate uh, meeting with some other people that are together. There's a, there's a big one that I'm part of where we're talking about, you know, how, what do we feel as affiliate owners and people that have been doing CrossFit for a long time? What do we want to see now? Mm -hmm. Now's our chance to paint, to paint. I mean, it's like, look, we can paint whatever we want and say like, Hey, HQ, here's some ideas because you obviously you're going to need some, I mean, you, you need some help with this. Mm -hmm. And, and, I don't think that HQ is in the position or even the desire to say, no, Hey, we got it. We got it. We'll take care of it. There's no way they're going to do that. There's no yeah. way. Yeah. And I just, I just, I hope, I hope that people can, you know, take a look at the picture of, okay, again, and this is, I really think that this is a, this goes kind of across the board. This is my, my personal feeling on this is I don't like grouping individuals. Mm -hmm. I don't think cops are bad because there was a cop that did this, or there've been cops that have handled that. Mm -hmm. I don't think that uh, African-Americans are bad because of gangs and blah and blah and blah. Like I, that, that's it. those are individuals that are doing that. I don't think that all teachers are bad because there's been, molestation that's happened or whatever i mean like there's a lot of ugly ugly things out there that individuals mm -hmm. have done but that doesn't mean that all those people are bad or that all those groups are bad and and exactly. i think that you know a lot of times it's very easy to to stamp that that label on a group just because an individual did it. And I, I just, I think that that's hard to do. I, I, I don't, I don't like doing that because I don't want anyone doing that to me. No, I, I just, well, I think you know, it I mean, comes it, down to, you know, it, it, you can correct me if I'm wrong. At least my perception of this whole thing is that there's so much argument for fairness, whether it be the black oh, yeah. lives matter movement going on right now, whether it be with COVID going on right now, the state of CrossFit, there seems to be a general conception. We want fairness and equality for all, which there should be. There's no yeah. doubt about that whatsoever. But here's the thing is that I don't think that a lot of people are being fair to people that are being are essentially having or being forced a hand. So as a gym owner, for example, with all the comments that were made by Glassman, it's either you're with us or you're against us in other yeah. people's minds and perceptions. And that to me is not fair to you, the gym owner, to be in that type of situation because you did not do that to yourself. You don't emulate that behavior. You don't embody that for you. But now you're being judged and viewed a certain way based upon your actions that you take. So I think that there's a level of fairness that's not being given to people that are not, that people are being forced into those situations. Well, I mean, they're you're you're right you're you're totally right um i i could see someone very easily go okay well it's not fair like this this and i'm not even talking george floyd i mean you could talk and any anyone that's been um i mean i i i know people that have been pulled over because they're black mm -hmm. they weren't doing anything they got pulled over because they were black okay that's not fair it's right. wrong um the fact of the matter is that 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 on all levels in all different sort of 
I mean, I got picked on when I was a kid because I had a big nose. Like, that's not fair, <laughs> but it is what it is. You know what I mean? Like there, and, and I'm not, not trying to compare that to races. I'm not, that's not what I'm trying to do. But I mean, there are all kinds of level where, guess what, man? Life is not fair. Mm, we'll and, and even, even though I am now forced to deal with the ramifications of one man's comments, um, I, I will not allow myself to respond in a way that is not how I have been responding prior to that, which is if you come to my face, I'm going to treat you with respect until I have a reason not to treat you with respect. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to, I don't, I don't care what race you are. I don't care what um, sexual and orientation you are. I don't care what your religious beliefs are. I have no reason to treat you bad unless you treat me bad. Mm -hmm. And so to me, it's a very, it's a very, it's a humanistic approach to whatever. And that is, that to me, I boil, I have to boil it all down to the simplest term for me so that that, that is my, that's going to be my common denominator across the board. Mm -hmm. across the board i mean and that could be someone someone that is um that's not to say that you know the people that are protesting and the people that are out there yelling and uh, you know all all the people that are uh, you know on social media and they're cutting and pasting all this stuff and if you don't do that you are now part of the problem i mean uh, okay i i i cannot tell you how to be mm -hmm. i can only be how i am and if if this is the way that works for me in my heart you know to my core mm -hmm. I, and and honestly i think honestly i can affect i have the the most dramatic way to affect change by me doing this because if i'm working with you personally on a one-on-one -on -one basis and i treat you with fairness and fairness and respect and you were you were just treated with disrespect and unfairness i think that i made a change there and mm -hmm. that's how i choose to affect change the way i can do it is by my actions uh, and what i teach my kids mm -hmm. and the next point after that is going to be the people that i'm that i'm with so like you know my people at my gym i don't care if you are white i don't care if you are black i don't care if you are asian i don't care if you are deaf i don't care if you have one leg or you're paraplegic i don't care i'm going to give you everything i got all, all of me mm-hmm I love that. And then, you know, and, that, and that's fair. And that's, I, I think that that's, I think that that's right for me. That's mm -hmm. how I, that's the only way I can choose to do it. I can't say what everyone else should be doing. It's really hard to do that. I mean, yeah, but I think that's what, that's what's hard is everyone is now saying you need to do it the way I'm doing it or you're wrong. Mm -hmm. I, you need to do it this way or you're bad. Um, it's like, wow. Well, <laughs> uh, okay. I mean, I, I, I don't really, I don't see how that's possible. Mm -hmm. um uh, again that's not saying that i'm saying that racist is, racism is bad mm -hmm. the shit needs to go yeah but that is you know that discrimination needs to go uh if you can't treat people like people you can't treat people like you want to be treated then you're a piece of shit Mm -hmm. like uh, that's that's how that's, that's the yeah. best way you, <laughs> <laughs> that's how it is i mean like i i that's just how be, it is. just be a good damn person that's that's what it comes down to yeah be a good damn person well yeah so you know we're talking about the state of cross it's very controversial right now because totally. it's you, you know you got to be careful what you say you don't want to you know step too far over boundaries or anything like that just being respectful and being a good person like we just said so playing your part which we are right now but i think that there's also a lot of other athletes playing their part and, you know, standing up and speaking out, especially as of recently. And what I'm alluding to is Chandler Smith no longer going to the games. Noah Olson said he's not going to the games. I believe there's a couple others now that are saying they're not going. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Kristen, uh, Christy Aramo, I think, was one that I saw. Uh, I haven't seen if there's been any other ones that, that have hopped on that list yet, but I, I think she was also in that, in, that, in that list. So do you think the games is going to happen this year still? Regardless, or what do you think the games is going to look like this year? Because it's a really, really weird dynamic. Um, it's a good question. I I think that I 
I think my personal opinion is that it will happen. The the downside to that is that it will always have the asterisk next next to it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I I I think that the fact that those guys are 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 protesting um, the stuff that was said, I, that's fine. But I, again, you have to do what you need to do, what feels right to you, and that, and that's I applaud those guys for doing that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel. Um, that the games can still go on. I think that, you know, everyone was going to see that it was going to be a little bit different anyway. So I don't believe that it will take as much to put it together as it has up in Madison. I, you know, not to say that, that Dave isn't going to, isn't going to do the, you know, the best that he can do to put it all together. I, I think that it's, there's still a lot of really cool stuff that can go down with it. Mm-hmm. And I think, I mean, I hope that it does go on because I think that that is an opportunity for CrossFit to show, okay, hey, we are changing. Here's how we're going to show you that we're changing. Not just because we're putting on an, an event. Like it's not, it's not about the event. It's a, here's the event. Now also we're going to attach to that. Let's show you the new the new version of of what crossfit is doing and I, i'm hoping that they can i mean there's a lot to pull together to do that mm -hmm. um and this is this all of this stuff is a um i mean something gonna put you know a wrench in the works for sure mm -hmm. there's a lot there's a lot of things to deal and i think honestly i mean I, i'll say this if the games didn't happen this year i don't think that would have hurt and this is pre all the dumb comments. Mm -hmm. If the game, if the games didn't go on, it wouldn't have hurt CrossFit because all the sports stopped. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it would have been bad. The Olympics was pushed up a year. So I don't think that any of that would have been, would have hurt. And I mean, if CrossFit was to say right now, Hey, you know what? We have this, we need to attend to first. We can't, we can't afford to, put any other of our resources to trying to figure out what the games are. Um, I don't think that would be a bad call. Uh, um, I, I'm not going to say that they should, you need to not can't, you need <laughs> to not No, because if they, if, because if they can pull it together and I, and like I said, I think that there's enough, um, excuse me, enough resources out there that are putting some ideas together that are going to package some stuff up for HQ. So they can just look at it and be like, Okay, that's really good. Yes, we need to do that. Okay, I think we can do that and get that together. So it's not like HQ is all by themselves trying, trying, you know, trying to think about it in a vacuum. There's a lot of other people with names that have been in CrossFit a long time that are all trying to come up with ideas of how to make it work. Because from what I'm gathering, from what I'm gathering, I think that us as CrossFitters, because guess what? We're CrossFitters, want to be able to keep that name mm -hmm. and fix what happened, not just abandon everything. Because if we abandon everything, um, you know, if, if it's the CrossFit community that's the, the thing that makes us, if I can go into a box in Spain and they see that I got nanos and they got nanos and we can instantly start talking, you're not going to be able to do that because who's going to go into a CrossFit box when CrossFit is not a word anymore? We're just going to be worker outer people. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you are if you're a Gold's Gym guy and you do your normal gym routine, you go to 24-hour fitness, you're not going to talk to anybody. There's no connection there. So I think we still want that connection. And I, th I think that as a worldwide community, I think we can fix mm -hmm. that. And I think HQ is wanting to fix that, but it, like changes are not going to happen in two days. Mm -mm. Even, even if you put Dave in there, like that doesn't mean that it's a puppet play. Necess I'm not saying it, 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 I don't know exactly. I need to wait for the dust to settle too. But if Greg is taken out, you got to put someone in there fill the spot. Maybe it's an interim thing. Maybe it's a uh, whatever until, you know, whatever they come up with the board of supervisors or they have some other way of putting it together. I, I a one man show didn't work. It needed mm -hmm. to change. I don't think it's going to continue to be that way. But again, I, you got to wait and see. So 
can it happen? I, I hope that it does because it would be a great way to showcase the new CrossFit and mm-hmm. to um, to try to have some sort of way of, of celebrating the change. Um, you know, but if it doesn't, I mean, I, I don't, I just, it'd be a great year for it to not happen yeah. you know, if, it, if it didn't. I don't think it'd be a bad thing just to kind of take a break and let everything kind of cool off and then reset and come out, you know, think instead of think about this long term instead of just what we need to accomplish in the short term, because oh, I think the, the, the long term is what we need to focus on. But me, my personal view is, you know, Dave comes from a military background of structure. And I think that CrossFit needs that type of structure, just like he structured his events at the games. Because yeah. when Glassman was the head, there was no structure. It seemed right. to be a constant teeter-totter of just back and forth between the athletes who wanted this and Greg who wanted this. And it was just back and forth and back and forth. And that's my next question for you. I asked this to Chase. I, got, I want to get your thoughts on it. With all the sanctionals and the changes and the drop of regionals and everything that's gone on within the past two years with CrossFit, do you think it's been a good thing for most athletes that the regional side of it is gone? Because I could say for me – on a firsthand example, even though I was never a regional athlete, I trained my ass off and I made a lot of sacrifices and everything that I possibly could to cut out so I could try to get to regionals. Yeah. But do you think that that was good for most people now that we just have sanctionals or do you think it benefits most athletes? Uh, the, I, I'll say this. I miss the regionals. Um, I really liked what they were. Uh, I, you know, I loved competing in them. Uh, I loved trying to get to them. Uh, I loved being able to broadcast them and, and watch the build up through them into the games. Mm-hmm. And it really brought a lot of your best athletes together to go head to head. As much as I did not initially like the sanctional events, I honestly think that it gives more people opportunities now to do that. Now, and this, and this is, and I, and I say this on a current, current state of events, not, not the current, current, but like the current year, the, sure. the last year. Um, there are a lot of athletes that have, uh, there are more athletes now that have opportunities based on the sanctioned events because when you go to the sanctioned events, you don't have the same number of caliber of athletes that you would if you did at the regional level Mm -hmm. Uh, so i think your chances of making it are better now granted you you are only you have to be the winner to do that uh but you know you take out the open people that usually does that you take out people that have already placed in other events so all of a sudden you know like the, the the rogue invitational last year you know the fact that chandler made it in that now granted he actually had a pretty decent placement but the uh, on the women's side, I want to say, um, I think the qualifier that made it, and her name's, it's off my, can't think of it right now, but uh, I think she was like 12th or 13th. Mm-hmm. She was 12th or 13th in the event and qualified to the games mm-hmm. because of the level of athletes that were there. So I, I think that, it, you know, it does allow a, a lot of opportunities. It definitely changes how you need to attack it and what your season's going to look like. Mm-hmm you know, in how you choose to, uh, where you choose to, uh, to peak in your training. It's definitely different. Um, I, I will say that I, I actually, I, I actually like it. I actually do like it. Mm-hmm. Um, now I don't know if that with the number of sanctioned events and the way that these you know, individual groups are, are, they're not given, they're not given the resources needed to put on the event. They, they come up with great workouts, but they are a, it ends up looking like a local throwdown because they, they, they aren't making money. Um, you know, no one can travel to these places, you know, uh, sponsorship wise. So they can't get sponsors. The, 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 attendance of these things of these things are usually not that high there's a couple that are that have a decent uh, you know uh, attendance but most of them don't have anyone anyone that show up so the money's not there because the money's not there they they 
want to have some sort of a broadcast, but they don't know how to do that. So you don't, you find out that someone gets a golden ticket to the game, but the way you find that is, a, is via Instagram story. <laughs> and like, I just, I think that, I think that that really lowers the importance of that event. So I don't think that there are going to be as many as there, as they were. I mean, I think the way we kind of saw it was that there's going to be a handful of big ones. So you're going to go from 30, sanction events or whatever the number is 32 or 28 or whatever the number is it's going to boil down to the six big ones which ends up being very similar to what the regional <laughs> what right. the regionals exactly. used to look like you know what i mean so i don't know i mean it's it's really hard i think it's been an interesting change um i i'm not i like what it is i do like what it is i think that it's it's pretty cool and it offer it offers a lot of more opportunities for athletes to be able to qualify mm -hmm. but again i i just don't know if the individual sanctioned events have the resources to where they can continue to put on a good event because they need to make money. I mean, these, these things, they can, they can't not make money and try to continue. It's just not going to work out that way. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, if they went back to the other way, that'd be cool. But then again, the other way was set up because CrossFit HQ had the media, then they put it all together and they were kicking it all out and they were putting all, you know, this money into it and stuff like that. So it's, I don't see that happening either. You know? Right. Well, I told, yeah. uh, I, I talked with Chase about this on our podcast too. You know, to me, it seems like there's a lot more opportunity now for commentators like you and Chase and Rory and now Heber with this video production to branch out and do their own things and capitalize on what they're really good at and to make, you know, more of a name and or more of a name for themselves, but to grow in an entrepreneurial spirit, I think is awesome. But you also get to travel all over the place. You get to see all these different cool places. You get to you get to do what people want to do. What is yeah. that, what is that like for you now? Kind of branching oh, off, man. doing your own thing with Chase and getting to travel and do all this. Do you like it better than the state that things were? Um, I I will say that that being able to go to these, I mean, amazing places. I can't think of any other way in my life if i didn't have this that i would be able to go wherever i mean what's really cool is that i'd I, you know I, i'd go to a starbucks at wherever place it is that i go and i have a lot of starbucks <laughs> mugs from like all i mean all over you know dubai and abu dhabi and spain and norway and switzerland and I, I mean it's like that to me is really really cool and i feel extremely lucky to have been able to do something like that. Um, I, I will say that, uh, you know, the fact that it's, it's a, it's a lot of, a lot of opportunity for, for people to go out and do that. What's weird though, is that it has put a lot of us against each other trying to get mm. spots. So here we all used to be on the same team. Interesting. And now, you know, it's, well, I'm trying to get this job, but, you know, Sean's trying to get this job and Chase is trying to get this job and, uh, you know, Tommy's trying to get this job or Jeff is trying to get this job or whoever. And or they or they're like, OK, well, we're just going to use one of our local people or uh, Armin's the name. So we're going to bring Armin to do whatever. And what I have found is that hmm. it isn't that people are doing what they're best at. People are trying to get in where they can like they're trying to get in where they can fit in. And they're trying to be attached to it somehow. So like personally in this, this like I, I know all these, I know all these guys. I, I, I know all of them. Um, I know what they have done over the, over the years. Like I, I think that like Armin is a, like the dude is a way better vlogger than I will ever be. The way he's able to talk to the camera, the way he's able to talk to the, you know, the people on his, on his, on his vlog and his, his podcast and everything is he does it really well. He, he's got an opinion and he can drive that opinion. And that's awesome. He obviously has a name in CrossFit, but I don't think with his skill set that he's a good live commentator. Live mm -hmm. commentary is a different skill. Um, stats guys, there, there are some amazing stats guys out that, you know, uh, Tommy Marquez was all, like where he started really branching out when, when it was HQ was the guy would go through all these stats and look at, you know, who did what, when, and why, you know, this person should do really well at this one. And this one person should do this. And here's the percentage difference on if you're first and this thing you finish. That information is awesome. And it's great stuff to talk about. 
Um, Brian Friend does the same thing. I mean, the, amazing. Chad Schroeder, he was our stats guy when we were HQ stuff. Those guys have amazing numbers. That's not my gig. I wouldn't mm -hmm. be as good at that. But when you grab one of those guys and try to put them in a live com uh, uh, commentary uh, situation, now it's different because all those numbers, honestly, don't mean shit anymore. <laughs> it's like, tell me why this person is doing it. Because, I mean, and that's maybe, maybe – for like, you know, myself uh, and other color commentators, being the athlete, we know that anyone can be beat on any day. Mm -hmm. But why is it happening right here? It has no, like the, the percentages don't mean anything on the other stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. They should be doing well, but why aren't they? That's what color is. We, we say why they're doing well or not well and how are they doing well or not well that's the color i we're supposed to give the depth to what it is that they're doing um and then the the play-by-play -play does the the you know what's happening what's happening right then so you you got sean um you know chase is kind of a he's kind of an anomaly he can actually kind of play both sides so when he's with me he plays cut, uh play by play when he's with sean so he's going to be actually at the rogue invitational this weekend with sean he's going to be doing color on that end so he's able to give that 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 coach's point of view with that which is really cool um and again i me me saying those things is not saying that tommy or brian or chad or uh armin that they aren't good and that they aren't good to have in there but i i feel that um when in the past we all got very good at our positions and why would you put a really good quarterback as a you know outside linebacker <laughs> you know or as a, even as a wide receiver why why put them there when i mean they they would probably do okay mm -hmm. but why do why do just okay when you can have great and i think that's really hard for um the the sanctioned events again they don't understand a lot of that stuff they don't they don't know mm. They're like oh my gosh we got we got a name Whoever the name is, I mean, whether it's Sean, whether it's me, whether it's Armin, whether it's you know Chase or whoever, we got a name in there, so we're going to be okay. And so they're they're kind of checking off the boxes, and and you know it's hard on the broadcast side to be able to see like, oh man, they really could have done it this way, or they should have done that, or it would have been better if they would have had Sean in there, you know, doing the the color, or the I mean, I'm sorry, the play by play or whatever. So it's it's tough, man. It, it has opened up a lot of doors and I think that that's good. Um, it's very weird cause these guys are all our team. So, I mean, I don't want to shoot down my, my, I mean, these are my people, you know yeah. I mean? John and Tommy are awesome. I love those guys. Um, the, the hard part is, is that like Sean and Tommy, because of talking elite fitness, those guys are kind of a team and me and chase because we do a lot of sanctioned events. And a, a, a lot of what that started was because, Sean was doing HQ and he was working with HQ and I was like, Hey man, we need to get more reps. Can we go do some of these other events? And he's like, yeah, I think that that you talked to the, you know, everyone else at the, the powers that be back in the day. And he's like, yeah, go get more reps. So that's where me and Chase started doing our thing. Cause it was like, we just, we wanted, we needed practice. We wanted practice. We couldn't mm -hmm. just practice at the games. So, you know, me and Chase kind of became uh, a team not that it couldn't be me and sean or even you know tommy and 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 chase and i mean like at wadapalooza it was i was working with it was me tommy and brian a couple times so i mean we can do it and we'll make it work um uh, but it is weird when you know like i'm not a play-by-play -play guy that's mm. not my that's not my i can do it but that's not my you know area of expertise you know what i mean absolutely um so it, it's it's a it's a weird it's a weird kind of a thing um i i think that we're all getting we are all pretty close that you know we're not going to cut each other down if someone gets a job hey man good luck man and we usually do that like i'm going to text you know sean and 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 um and chasing those guys this weekend and be like put on a good show boys i'll be watching you know because yeah. that's what we do i mean like we're all backing each other up but um it is a it is a it was a little wild west, I think, out there for a little while, you know. Yeah, interesting. Everybody, Whatever. everybody wants to. Everyone wants to get their gig, you know. Everyone wants to have their show. Everyone wants a piece of the pie, right? <laughs> totally, absolutely. And, then, well, and that's one of the things that you know, being that there are thirty events out there, everyone can, mm -hmm. but no one knows who's going for what. You know, everyone just kind of ah, we're all shooting for whatever, and see what happens after that. So right. But it, it's been interesting. Well, it's just you know, 
we could talk about this for hours and hours and hours and hours. That's just because of the state right now. It's just completely unknown. There's, yeah. there's really no direction, but I'm excited to see what comes of it. I know you are too. Um, I hope it's positive, which I'm sure it will be. I know it's going to take some time, but I'm confident that, you know, this is rock bottom and there's got to be way back up. I, I, I oh believe, man, absolutely. I, I believe that wholeheartedly. Totally. Well, I want to ask you, because we talked about a lot of good stuff, Bill. You provided a lot of awesome insight today. I want to ask you a couple random questions, fun questions to kind of close okay. us off today. All right. All right. Might be borderline controversial if some of these athletes listen to it. We'll see. Okay. Who is your favorite male CrossFit Games athlete? Uh... Wow. That's a good question. Um, I for sure thought it was going to be Matt Frazier. I guess I was wrong, dude. Uh, <laughs> well, you, you know, what's funny, like, so when I started commentating, I was still competing mm -hmm. and, and as a competitor, I don't put anybody up on a pedestal. So I didn't have a favorite because the thing is, if I think you're way up here, how the heck am I supposed to beat you? Exactly. And, and so I really, I really, I really kind of feel um, that. And I think that that just kind of continued there. There's a lot of things I like about a lot of the athletes. I like what, what I like about what I'll say about that. It may be easier for me to tell you things that I like about different athletes because mm -hmm. I, I, I don't, I don't think I have a, I don't think I have a, like a favorite like that. What I love about Matt is the dude is so damn good and he still tries so damn hard. Mm. Like, uh, like, you know, you know, people always talk about the, you know, the, what, the, what if, you know, rich against, against Matt rich, the fact that that guy's still doing what he's doing is unreal, but like he was so good at his time um, when he was competing. The difference that I saw with him is he never, it was very rare that he went all in. He didn't, he didn't, most of them he didn't have to. And if he didn't, he just, he made sure that he just beat you. I don't see Matt just beating anyone. Like the dude goes full tilt all in on every event and I that's that's what I admire most about him. He's a he's a champion that does not look at all like he has lost his hunger. And that's mm. that's super fun to watch, you know. Um and then you got the flip side like if we want to you know kind of go down like the the podium for them last year like Noah, what I love about Noah, well one I, I love that he is finally maturing into his position. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that he is been able to I, i've seen him try to practice it this kind of mindset of like i'm not worried about the outcome i'm just worried about trying to do my best it's very easy to say very hard to do as an athlete because you don't train to lose you train to win the event mm -hmm. not to train to do my best in the event because you know remember the movie the rock you uh -huh. know you know you know you don't you don't try, you don't, you don't do your, do your best. You know? <laughs> Only losers say, do your best, you know, try to do your best, you know, win us to, you know, go and take the, take the prom queen. Um, that's like, that's a hard thing to do. But what he's done is he's done that. And I, it's very cool to see him really be able to do that and still perform. The fact mm -hmm. that you are going like, okay, I'm all into what I'm doing, not all into the, to the result, but all into my performance right now. And being happy about that, like that's super cool to watch. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Pat Vellner, the way that that dude is, he generally speaking gets so is so unfazed by things that happen to him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he takes everything in stride, and you know whether he's whether he's falling from a cargo <laughs> net or you know, his bike breaks or I forgot about know. that. <laughs> I mean, the guy just kind of is like, you know, maybe that's a Canadian thing. It's like, well, you know, I, you know, 
I guess I'm just gonna have to kind of keep you know, keep on going. <laughs> um, I mean, but he's but he's even with that, he's a very ferocious competitor, you know. And mm-hmm. um, I, I I I I admire that about him. Like the guy just keeps coming, and he he, he doesn't get rattled, and that's. So those are the, I like those kind of things. I don't know really, that really answer your question. No, it, it does. But, I just got to add so. in one one funny piece. I love there who I don't know who made it. There was an American sniper clip. Oh, dude, just, I think that was Fluffy Duck. Just, I think that was Fluffy Duck. One of the best ones out there. There, <laughs> boom! There goes Matt Fraser down. <laughs> <laughs> boom! There goes. Oh my gosh! One of the best things. Literally one of the best videos ever put together. I for loved Up. that thing. So good. But we digress. It's okay. There's there's a lot of those moments that popped up. <laughs> Now, I want to ask you one more about the male yeah. side, and then I want to ask who your favorite female athlete is. Do you think Matt will ever be beaten? And if so, who's it going to be by? Oh. No. I don't think he will. Um, I, I haven't seen anyone... I haven't seen – okay, so one of my favorite rock movies is, like, the whole Rocky series. So it's, like, I love that kind of stuff. I haven't seen the Clubber Lang out there yet. I haven't seen the dude – like, everyone's, everyone's training hard, but I don't see anyone – at least it has Matt Fraser's picture up on their bathroom mirror that they look at that picture every day and they're like, I am fucking coming for you. Like you better watch that man, dude. I'm. You don't see me yet. I'm coming. Like <laughs> that. That I don't. I don't see anybody out there doing that yet. I see a lot of people that like. Well, you know, I think that he can be beat. You know, I just have to do really well. I have to try really hard, and you know, I, there's got to be an animal instinct out there. Mm-hmm. Um, with what's what's funny is the last time I saw something like that was uh uh. Ricky Garrard, mm-hmm. and I remember talking to his brother at the games. And I, 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 whenever I do this, I don't know what you're doing right now, but man, keep doing it. And it, yeah, find out that that's what he was doing. You know, <laughs> taking whatever something he was taking. But um, what I liked was he wasn't playing for second; he was playing to beat Matt to mm-hmm. to win, and. You know, even before that, the last person I saw that, that was before that was Tommy Hackenbrook and, you know, trying to go after Rich. And it was like, and vocally, he'd say, I'm coming for you, man. I'm uh-huh. coming for you. I mean, if I, if I get second, I don't even care. I don't even count. I want to beat you. I'm coming for you. <laughs> like, that's, like, that's what has to, that's what has to be out there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, no, I don't, until, until someone is out there with that, I don't see Matt getting beat. I agree completely. Now let's talk yeah. females. Who's your favorite female athlete? Um, uh, I really like Tia right now. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, granted she's the champ and it's, I don't, I don't like her because she's the champ. Uh, I like that. She, I really like the transformation as a, as an individual that she's had. Um, from when she first, you know, was on the scene and competing, you did not hear a word from her. Mm-hmm. She was quiet. She would just kind of do her thing. And that was kind of it. Um, even when, you know, even when she was on the podium, you didn't see much. Even when she was champ the first time, you didn't see much. Like you just didn't, she wasn't making any noise. And then she, as far as I could tell, she just seemed like one of those completely introverted people. Mm-hmm. Now she's not, you know, she's, uh, she's, she's, you know, super fun. You see her joking around and, and being goofy when she's training with Matt. Um, I mean, I, I love the fact that she's on TikTok and she's <laughs> doing all these TikTok dances and stuff like that. I think that that's, that that's funny and, and super cool. But what I like is that she's so good and having so much fun at the same mm-hmm. time. Anyway, it's always fun when you're winning. So, I mean, like that's, it's kind of a, a no brainer, but um, it, it's cool seeing, I mean, she's just, she's good at everything. Just, you know, really, really good. But, but the, you know, same thing. I, I love watching, uh, man, Samantha Briggs, like, 
Okay, it's one, so she was a firefighter. Fun. She's uh -huh. she what I love about Sam is she's always smiling and always fighting. Mm -hmm. And it's not you never hear her have any there's never an excuse. Like it's not, well, I'm old, that's why or older, that's why I'm, you know, I'm not doing this. Well, you know, you know, strength has never been my thing. She just is like, you know, in her heavy active. Well, I guess we just go and see what happens and she kind of does the thing, you know, and she just goes out there and is always smiling, always smiling. And Go she's a badass. Yep. Man, and she's a badass. So I, I really like to me, she's she's just inspiring because it's like she's she embodies the um the old school CrossFit athlete, which is I'm doing I'm having a blast doing it. I'm gonna train super hard i'm going to compete super hard and i'm going to love all of it mm -hmm. whether i make it or not i'm going to love all of it and that's she's just great to watch i mean i mean i could go down the list i mean i think i think katrin's great i love watching her when she competes and and i love i love watching um uh, uh sarah sigmund's daughter like I'm, I'm really bummed what's gone down this year mm -hmm. uh, with all the stuff because she was finally i at least from what i could tell on the path to being the Sarah that she's, that I've been waiting to see. She, mm -hmm. I mean, she's had all the skills, had all the pieces, but trying to line it all up, you know, and not making it about, you know, where she's living or, you know, even who the coach is or whatever. I mean, I've never seen an athlete transition more than her through all that kind of stuff. But um, I was really fired up to watch her this year. I mean, I, you know, we saw her in Dubai. She did well there. We, you know, saw her at Wadapalooza, and I actually talked to her at Wadapalooza. And I'm like, man, it's finally, mm -hmm. finally. I, I don't want to see. I don't want it to be the. You show me your face that you're all. I'm fired up. I see my face, and then you know, before I ten seconds before I do the event, like just do it. <laughs> and that's what was happening. You know, she was just doing it and, and go and going all in, and that was that was really fun to see. It was really yeah. fun to see. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, last CrossFit related question I got for you. Okay. You and Chase just started a podcast called Get With yep. the Programming. You talk all things programming and I love it. It's awesome. It's really entertaining. You guys are like the dynamic duo. I love it. You're like fire and ice. It's, it's, it's <laughs> perfect. But I got to ask you, what, what's your favorite games event that was ever programmed? Of all oh, time. man. Uh, you got to pick one. It can't be a top three. It's got to be one. That's a, that. That is a. That's a really hard question. I will say we are going to have an episode that has events going head to head um, <laughs> to come out with the best one. So you'll have to stay and stick to for I that saw one. That bracket um, I, challenge. Oh man, yeah, that that's going to be that's going to be really really fun. Um. Okay. Best ever. Uh. One of the things that I really like about CrossFit competitions is when you can get an event that you know people haven't been able to do in their gym. Mm -hmm. um, that I think that is one of the that's one of the coolest fitness pieces out there. I'm probably gonna be you're gonna you ruin me because I'm gonna be thinking about this all day long. <laughs> but I can give you one that like pop the one that pops into my head honestly right now. Uh, would be the the sandbag wheelbarrow event where noah dropped his and all of them fell off the side yeah <laughs> yeah um so they redid that one they did it twice um the second time they had better uh <laughs> they had better wheelbarrows because the first year some of them broke um but what i liked about that was again like there's even if you practiced moving some stuff, uh, you know, in wheelbarrows, you never had the exact setup where you could pick the sandbags and have to drag them down and have to figure out how you're going to get up over this wall and, 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 you know, and make, make it so you can pick them all back up again and how you're going to transverse them uh, you know, across. I just, what I like about it was, and this is, this comes from like my firefighter firefighting background is, Okay, here's the incident. Go. 
that there isn't necessarily I love that. only one way to do it. You know, it isn't like, oh, I'm very good at hang clean, so I'm going to win this event. It is, all right, now how are you going to put all this functional fitness together to make something happen? And I just thought that that was a really cool way uh, of doing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I said, I, 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 that that's one that just would pop out, pops out in my head. I thought that it was a very cool event um, that did a lot of things right away all together you mm-hmm. know, to, to come up with a winner of that particular event. Um, and I just, it was fun to watch. It was, uh, yeah, because you just didn't know what was going to happen. You know what I mean? This is freaking, I like that freaking one. grunt work too. It's oh, awesome. Dude. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. I mean, who's going to, who's going to program that? And it wasn't a, it wasn't a circus event. You know what I mean? Like I didn't mm-hmm. see it as a circus event. I saw it as a, uh, uh, you're right. As a, as it, it, here's, here's a work event, like three, two, one, go, go do work. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I really liked it. Well, I like how you said too, it's, you know, it's, it's not about, who's the specialist in this one because there is no freaking specialist. It's just uh-uh. who wants to work and that's it. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's what's exciting. Yeah. No, that, that's a good one. I like that one. I'll, solid answer. I'm going to leave that. it at that one because I like, I seriously, I could, I could give you probably about eight or 10 right now, but I, I'm just going to stick with that one. We're just, just giving Chase one. a little, uh, a little heads up. So he can <laughs> copy on that one. I mean, well, I, I obviously like I, I love the swimming ones. I mean, I love the the one that they did in the pool with the swimming in the bar muscle ups. I thought Ooh, that one was great. Was I love the I love the 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 swim the the run swim paddle that they would do. Mm. Um I I I love the uh the the killer cage with the front squats and the bike. I thought that oh, one yeah. was you know one of one of the best ones. It was, you know, the way it was programmed was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, so, I mean, there was a lot, I thought the burden run was cool, you know, carrying oh, a log yeah. and doing the, doing the drag. I mean, there's so many good events that that have been out there. It's really hard to pick a best one. Um, I, I have my list that I'm compiling as we go through each of the years and trying to pick <laughs> one from every games and then kind of go from there as we do our head to head thing. So it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting, but yeah, I, I really liked that what that one was set up. And I don't think that there was no way that anyone was planning for that one. And no. I think that that was really cool. I'm looking forward to that bracket challenge. That'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, Bill, you know, uh, we, we've talked a lot of great things today, man. We talked all things CrossFit, uh, you know, all things, your career and getting to know you more on a personal level to uh, your career before your now career right now, yeah. that, for lack of a better <laughs> phrase, but for your now career, my but current, my current of now, your current status. But I always leave what I always do at the end of my podcast is I give people the floor just to talk about what's on their heart. Uh, obviously, this is a podcast about mindset. Uh, so if you have anything that's on your mind pertaining to mindset or just life in general, the state of CrossFit or anything, now's your chance. So four yeah. is yours, my friend. Okay. Um, uh, this has been a very, very, very weird time. And you know, we talked about this earlier about how, you know, if you remember that movie Fight Club, there's that part in there where Tyler Durden is talking about how we're the – we're the misfit generation and we didn't have any, you know, no world wars or, you know, no great depressions or anything to fight through. And, and we, I mean, we've had some bad things that have happened obviously, but it seems like we got smashed all at one time, you know, with these big beats, big, heavy issues. And I think that, um, it's taken its toll on a lot of people. And, you know, how are you supposed to get through stuff like this? And I think that, you know, it really comes down to grit and fortitude and knowing that you're going to be okay once you get on the other side. Uh, But you got to get through a bunch of shit before you can do that. And that's where we are right now is we are dealing with a bunch of shit and trying to fix it. Whether you are on the protesting side or you are on the protection side or you are you know, wondering what's happening on the CrossFit side or um, you are being discriminated against or you are running into hard times financially because of, you know, how the COVID is is handled things or you are having issues with, you know, whether it's relationship issues or whatever, like there comes a point where it can't be a, let me look at this gigantic mountain of all the crap. It's going to be, what can I affect right now? 
And as long as you are being able to take one step forward, it doesn't matter how big the step is, that's going to be forward progress. You know, and they say forward, always forward. And, you know, forward may mean coming to the side. Forward may take a lot longer than you want it to take, but that doesn't mean that it's not forward. So um, everyone is struggling right now. Um, I think that we all need to be uh, very respectful of that. Um, understand that people are handling that in very different ways. And it may not be the way that is, that is feeling very nice to us. Um, try not to take things personal. Mm-hmm. People are going to do what they need to do because they're trying to get through it. But, you know, use that grit and that fortitude to hang in there because there is going to be light at the end of, at the, end of the tunnel. We are going to get better with the, with the, the, um, all the awareness that's happening right now uh, with racism in our society and with, you know, uh, uh, discrimination in our society. There's a lot of people that are pissed and a lot of people know that. I think that that is going to have a, an effect and, and make some changes somewhere, if not on a massive level, which eventually, hopefully it will, but at least on a personal level. And that's where a, fe- a change can be affected. Um, whether it is, you know, on the CrossFit side, you know, let people, speak your voice get try to get in with groups that can make change make change don't just cut and paste information try to make a change if you aren't able to make a big change make a small change because again it's a step forward Mm. there's always forward um and i think that's important um treat people like people man communicate don't don't be super sensitive about every single thing that's that said have a communication uh and just, man, just be respectful of people. I love that. Well, yeah, love that. Peace, man. Peace. <laughs> be a good damn person, like we said. Just be good. Just bring just some positivity good. to the world. Well, Bill, I appreciate your positive being in your presence and taking time out of your day to come and talk and provide some awesome value, some insight about your perception about the state of the CrossFit right now. Um, I know you're looking forward to some positive change as an athlete totally. and, and somebody involved in CrossFit, the same for me as well. Um, you know, and I believe that change is coming. It's just going to take some time for us to get there. But Bill, lastly, one question I will ask you to end is how do people get in contact with you? If they have any questions for you, want to know about more about your gym, where, where, where can people find you? Uh, okay. So on Instagram, it's just at Bill Grundler. Um, you can hit me up on that. I'm I'm usually pretty good with, uh, with DMs there. Um, my, my email, they, if they want to email me something, whether it's a, a gym related question, um, CrossFit related question. Uh, if it has to do with some of my master stuff, I have a master's template, uh, a master workout template that I do. It's called the, the legacy program. And you can find that on Instagram at the awesome. underscore legacy, uh, underscore the underscore legacy underscore program. Um, I do remote programming. If people are looking for remote programming, um, one-on-one stuff, I, I, I tend to work with a lot of master's athletes, but I, I obviously can work with anybody. I work with a lot with firefighters too, if they're looking to either get into the fire service, getting people into their academies and through their academies and stuff. Um, hit me up on my website, billgrunler.com. You can see you know, whether it's commentary stuff or the legacy program or keynote speaking. I do a lot of that kind of stuff as well. Uh, hit me up whenever. So yeah, find me out there. Oh, and get with the programming. Yes. That, uh, the podcast with me and Chase. So um, we're in that, we're in that realm as well. You can see, you can download wherever you get your podcast. So, so Spotify, um, the Apple store, yeah. uh, all those are on there. So we've been, I won't say we've taken a little hiatus, but the, all the stuff that's been going on with CrossFit, it kind of bumped us a little bit. So we're, we're still waiting to do, we're on uh, 2012 coming up. Um, we still haven't hit that yet, but we're, uh, waiting to get that out there as soon as we can so awesome. we can get back on track with everything. So yeah. Very cool. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Bill. And then for all of y'all watching this who are new to the channel, uh, if you liked it, liked our interview with Bill, which I hope you did, you're looking forward to more awesome content to help you enrich your mind and strengthen your mindset. Then this is definitely the place for you as well. Uh, so press that subscribe button, follow along for more awesome interviews to come. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. My name is Jimmy, last name Gross, G R O S S. And yes, a bunch of kids in third grade gave me a bunch of shit for that. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they still do, but that's okay. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram, same thing. And then we have a Facebook page as well, Mind Over Matter Podcast. If you want to go there and drop a like, 
it gives you notifications about future, uh, just future content, things that I'll post on there to keep it fun and interactive. But thank you all so much for tuning in and watching. And Bill will talk for a little bit longer. Don't leave just yet. But for the rest of you all, I look forward to chatting with you with our next interview coming up here sometime next week. We'll see you.